Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. This is Health and Lifestyle Wednesday. And tonight, if you're just joining us, we're talking about community development. And we have Peter Ngure, who is the Director of Pathways Policy Institute. And tonight, we just seek to really understand, uh, when they talk about uh, Pathways Policy Institute, probably what type of policies are they talking about? What do they address? What challenges, rather, are they focusing to meet or to address with the policies that they get to make? And we also mentioned that today, uh, the September is the World Contraceptive Month. So he's going to be telling us something more about uh, con contraceptive and what message do they seek to pass to the young people. And you can be part of this conversation. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Welcome. Hello, Peter. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good, good. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, just as we dive into this discussion, Tell us, uh, what is the function of uh, Pathways Policy Institute? I think Pathways Policy Institute is a policy think tank that uh, seeks to look into matters around uh, accountability mm -hmm. and policies that we have in the country, but specifically on population, mm -hmm. health and environment. Mm -hmm. So our focus is uh, basically issues around how to manage our population as a country mm -hmm. and how our health indicators look like in the country mm -hmm. and especially in the counties because health is devolved. Mm -hmm. And then the issues of environment because you cannot uh, divide population and environment. The higher population you have, the more they need the environment and the more they will misuse the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, but we work around young people. We try to ensure that young people are at the center of this conversation. Our mantra is meaningful community engagement. So mm -hmm. we look at uh, how can young people be part of the community, mm -hmm. be part of the conversations in the community, and be part of the solutions in the community. Okay. Yeah. All these things that you've uh, talked about or rather mentioned uh, involve uh, the just reaching out to the local uh, uh, Kenyan person. So how do you involve them? How do you engage if it's the young people? If probably it's a, it's, a, it's a project or a program towards, let's say, teenage pregnancies. How do you now get to involve the young girls and the young boys and also the parents in policy making? The first thing we do uh, through that mantra, uh, community engagement, we try to look, even when we are starting our projects, we ask ourselves where is the challenge? Mm -hmm. And we ask the young people, where is the challenge that you're facing at this juncture? Mm -hmm. Like currently, the biggest challenge among young people has been unemployment yeah. as the first biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And then the issues around teenage pregnancy, uh, sexual reproductive health issues, and then drugs. Mm -hmm. So for us, we've been looking when we talk to young people then they tell you these are the issues that we are facing okay. and then we come back with data because as a policy think tank mm -hmm. we also have access to some of the data that maybe the young people may not access we have access to government systems mm -hmm. we can be able to see what are the challenges like currently we can be able to look at nairobi and see uh the under 15 year olds who are receiving contraceptives mm -hmm. the under 19 year olds who are going for family planning mm -hmm. and then we can have a conversation why is this a challenge mm -hmm. and what can we do to help and we ask the young people People to give their solutions mm -hmm. because the young people know what they need. They don't need to be told fanyeni ivi, fanyeni ivi. They mm -hmm. know what they want. All they lack is what we call an agency. Mm -hmm. And so Pathways is an agency for young people to be able to voice their concerns. Mm -hmm. If it's the issue of drugs, they know where the drugs are sold. Uh, the government may not really know where, where are the drugs in Gedurai, where are the drugs in Majengo in mm -hmm. Laikipia, where are the drugs in Bangladesh in Mombasa, but mm -hmm. the young people know. Mm -hmm. So if they can partner with the young people, then we can be able to eradicate such a vice. Mm -hmm. If it's an issue of where unsafe abortions happens in the country, the young people know, young girls know where they go to seek these services. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to reverse all these challenges that young people face if we involve them, talk to them, and look for solutions through okay. them. Okay. Uh, you've talked about unemployment uh, being one of the major problems that young people in this country are facing. And it's something that has been talked about in most likely every platform that has been there that targets probably to address something uh, young people. What, what, what is your thoughts on that? Unemployment among the young people of this country? Uh, and, and you know, unemployment is something that is there globally. Mm -hmm. And especially unemployment of young people because of the uh, the skills and the experience that is required for us to get a job. Mm -hmm. So you will always find 
a larger number of young people being unemployed globally mm -hmm. than the older populations. Mm -hmm. But the hope is that in the countries that are developed, the hope is that you can be able to get these young people getting into the system as apprentices, as internships, and mm -hmm. then they can learn. And by the time they are turning 30, 35, mm -hmm. they have been absorbed fully in the system. Mm -hmm. But in our country, we have that challenge that we have no st clear structures. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is the first tier that the government has a very clear structure of internship. Mm -hmm. Where they were able to take about 15,000 young people into various ministries, mm -hmm. and these young people are being absorbed, they are learning, and then the hope was that after one year they can be absorbed fully into into government. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's a, a good way of dealing with young people. Mm -hmm. But also our education system, giving young people we, we, we have done so much theory and we have missed on the on the practical, practical side, mm -hmm. side and this is a challenge because then you look at today i was watching mutai say if we can get young people making ppes in this country mm -hmm. they're a bit cheaper than when we are buying from from Outside. china or from mm -hmm. wherever mm -hmm. and if you look at some counties they have actually invested in this mm -hmm. for instance for like there is a guy who is making toys mm -hmm. you know these dollies that young girls play with mm -hmm. making them locally other than importing the 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 white ones that come from china mm -hmm. so those are the kind of things we try to to look and say where can you and, and as a police think tank then we help government think in that direction okay so ours is not really to uh, hold the young person hand and show him the business mm -hmm. we talk to government so that there's uh, an environment that is conducive for young people mm -hmm. but we're also happy this year about Kazim Tani of mm -hmm. all the projects that government has run before and I know a lot of people have issues with it mm -hmm. this project has employed quite a large number of young people mm -hmm. and the money that they are given the 455 they can actually be able to invest this money yeah. into productive so there's there's change that is happening it's a bit slow than mm -hmm. we would want, but yeah. But it's because our youth population is really big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get to talk probably about any uh, the contraceptive uh, uh, world month, what is tell us about the Ecopoa project by Pathways. Uh, Pathways runs a project called Ecopoa. Mm -hmm. Eco is a, a coined. Eco is a Kiswahili word. Mm -hmm. uh, we coined it roughly to mean there is. Mm -hmm. So we look at uh, we say there is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, health, a bold health worker. We call it ECO, the Bold Health Worker Project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bold health. This country has had a challenge of health workers not being bold enough to offer services to young people mm -hmm. because of the backlash by the child, because of the backlash by the parents, because mm -hmm. of the backlash by uh, service delivery, and mm -hmm. even because of distances where the young people, you know, young people do not want to come to a health facility and say, ah, I have this challenge. Mm -hmm. There are many challenges that young people have. Sometimes they're just seeking information mm -hmm. and they look around and see the person who is giving information is their aunt in the facility, especially in rural areas. And they're scared, really, the stories it, are going to spread. Yes, someone will go, it's the person who collects tithe in your church mm -hmm. who is coming to give you services. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for family planning or contraceptive mm -hmm. or even information, just basic information about STIs. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking for in ECO is that we're asking the young people, do you know one? one health worker who is bold enough to offer services to you mm -hmm. at your convenience either they we, we have identified health workers who have formed whatsapp groups mm -hmm. like in Gedurai, West Pokot and in Laikipia mm -hmm. where they chat with young people even in the evening mm -hmm. because young people will not come to the facility yeah. at 9 at 10 in the day they would want to uh, the, the time they are free maybe from college or from school is in the evening most facilities level two level one are closed mm -hmm. so this health workers chat with them on phone there is one in West Pokot who uses border border and moves to where the young people are and takes commodities to them mm -hmm. so we are appreciating this kind of people with a token uh, we give them a token of uh, cash mm -hmm. but we also give them a mug that is written you're a bold health worker and mm -hmm. we give them a badge mm -hmm. just appreciating and recognizing them and it's really changing the way young people and health workers relate okay what plans do you have for world contraceptive month 30 september and what message are you hoping to to pass to people and as far as we know this is these targets the young people uh i would like us to also talk about institutions and people whose perception about contraceptive and opinions have really gone against that. What message do you seek to pass? Uh, September, as I mentioned, is, is a World Contraception Month and we, we have a lot of conversations around contraception mm -hmm. and around, around family planning as, mm -hmm. as, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it was started about uh, 10 years ago and the conversation has been ongoing. And uh, for the last three years, the, the themes have been around it's your, your choice, it's your right, it's your body. Mm -hmm. Make good choices around your body. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the country as a background, the country contraceptive prevalence rate, which means 
uh, the number of people who are accessing uh, contraceptives, who want to access contraceptives and are accessing, mm -hmm. is about 56%. Mm -hmm. And that means there is a whole population of, of people who don't access contraceptives in this country. Mm -hmm. So in the month, we will be having more and more conversations around what is the benefits of family planning? Mm -hmm. What is the benefits of young people delaying their, first delaying their sexual debut, mm -hmm. but if they can't delay their sexual debut, they will engage in sex. Mm -hmm. How how important is it for them to delay giving birth to the first child until mm -hmm. maybe they are through with college mm -hmm. or until they are ready for that responsibility? They, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of conversation. So we will be having those conversations with young people this year mm -hmm. and hoping that uh, they can they can be able to voice their needs to mm -hmm. the government because right now there is the reproductive health bill which is in yeah. the Senate mm -hmm. and there is a lot of backlash and bad conversations around it because no one has really talked about the benefits of contraceptives. So in the whole month we will be having that conversation and uh, on 20th of September it's mm -hmm. called the World, uh, World Female Condom Day. We mm -hmm. have a conversation around the female condom. Mm -hmm. It's not a conversation that many people want to have mm -hmm. and of course the female condom is a bit more expensive than the male condom so mm -hmm. you should have a conversation like why is there gender disparity that mm -hmm. the male condom is cheaper than the female condom? Mm -hmm. Why why isn't it accessible to all the young women who would want to use it? Mm -hmm. And we'll still have conversation on the 26th on the World Contraception Day on mm -hmm. the other methods of family planning mm -hmm. that young people and even older people can use to be able to manage their families, not to limit their families, mm -hmm. but just to space their families so that then you can be able to get the children that you can manage to bring up, but also you can be able to have the health of the mother mm -hmm. and the child being well because if you space for like three to five years between mm -hmm. one child and the other, we know the child will have breastfed fully well, mm -hmm. and you know the mother will have restored her health, mm -hmm. and then she can be able and ready to get another child. So that's a conversation we will be having okay. uh, around the month. Okay. Now, uh, we have institutions, as I mentioned earlier, that are against contraceptives. What are you doing probably to lions together with these people to try and tell them it is okay probably to give these contraceptives to these young people to help them probably not make certain choices that could mess up their future? What are your plans or strategies to make sure that you bring uh, these institutions, the society together in the fight or rather in the creating awareness of contraceptive in the country? We are, we are trying very much as civil society organizations first to come together as, as, organ as NGOs and agree on what messages we want to send mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to the young people and to the country and to the government. Mm -hmm. But we also know our adversaries, the, the cultural groups and the yeah. religious groups. Mm -hmm. We are hoping in the next one month to have a good conversation, especially because of that bill at the Senate. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to have a conversation with the religious leaders. They also have a point. Sometimes they ask questions mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's legitimate for them to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Like the questions around values. Mm -hmm. Where did our values disappear well, yeah. to? So that uh, the teen year olds are just having sex freely. In yeah, the and we're telling them to use contraceptives. Yeah, and no one is mm -hmm. worrying about it. So we want to have this conversation and see has the church failed? Mm -hmm. Have the cultural leaders failed? Mm -hmm. So what is their role and how should they guide children? Mm -hmm. Have parents failed? Mm -hmm. Right now parents are having a lot of pressure because they, they were used to teachers taking care of their roles. Mm -hmm. Now it's turned back because of COVID. Now parents have to take care. Yeah. So how do parents have a conversation about sexuality with their children? Mm -hmm. And unlike before when children would wait until 15, 16 before even they start having their menstrual uh, you know, cycles and stuff. Yeah, these days it comes earlier. Nine, ten yeah. years. So how do you as a parent as a church leader mm -hmm. as a cultural leader start having this conversation and for us who have come out broadly and said this is a conversation we want to have we want to bring them on board mm -hmm. and let's talk about these things okay let's agree on a on a ground that first there's nothing we can do about the the 3,000 girls in Nairobi who, who have gotten pre pregnant yeah. in the last so we need to take care of that generation and it means if 3,000 got pregnant, this is just maybe 2% mm -hmm. of the percentage of those who are having sex. Mm -hmm. So how do we have this conversation? Okay. The other thing is that we realize that there's a lot of conversation around uh, teenage pregnancy that is focused only on the girl. Yeah. The boy child is left out. And 61% of the pregnancies uh, with teenage girls are mm -hmm. caused by teenage boys. Mm -hmm. The border border guys around yeah. home, mm -hmm. the guys who sell mtumba, mm -hmm. those uh, to stalls. Mm -hmm. Those are young people who mm -hmm. are doing a lot of businesses at home. Yeah. And we need to have this conversation with them. So there's 
we're trying to we we as a society have to try and bring ourselves together and have an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the moment you start this conversation with some people, they bring uh, a lot of very traditional values and traditional morals that are not mm -hmm. playing out today. Okay. So we want to have an honest conversation and say, let us allow our young people have first the information. Mm -hmm. So that they know, and studies have shown that if you give young people information about sexuality, contraceptives, they delay engaging in sex by three years. Mm -hmm. So there is a value in having this conversation. Okay. And then we can give them commodities if they want later on. Okay, thank yeah. you very much, Peter. But before we wind up, uh, social media uh, platforms where people would like to know more about Pathway Institute, just like two seconds. Yeah, if you do want to reach us, you can reach us on uh, our website, it's www.pathway not pathways, pathway.co.ke. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can reach us at uh, Twitter, Public mm -hmm. Pathways. Mm -hmm. And you can reach us on uh, Facebook, Public Pathways. Mm -hmm. You can reach me at Pitangura. Mm -hmm. That's my Twitter handle. Okay. And we can have these conversations going forward. Okay, thank you very much. And I wish you all the best in uh, community development as you continue to pass across message to young people and also to our elderly people uh, that we get to cr create young people who are well informed. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.